Hi everybody and welcome to another chess tips video where if you give me about 10 minutes of your time I'll teach you or help you strengthen a chess concept. Today we're going to be talking about making a plan in chess. Let's define what that means. I describe it as a slow or a fast process to improve your position and increase your winning chances. And all of the examples I have for you today are from my own personal games. Let's jump into them. We're going to start out with tactical plans, which go a little bit faster. Those involve attacks, potentially, on a king, on a side of the board. And we have this position in front of us where I was playing with the black pieces. Here, I began an attack immediately on my opponent with the move b5. And so my plan was to bring the queen before I move this pawn. Since if I go b4 right away, he's just going to pop his knight out to the side and then maybe play like this, and I'm not going to make any sort of progress into his position. So my plan here was queen a5, and then the move b4, dislodging the defender of this pawn and potentially getting into the territory. He played h3, which looks like it doesn't do anything, but it does. It is setting up a plan of his own. He's trying to counterattack me in the center of the board. So my tactical plan is going to start transforming the position very quickly. After the next few moves, king b1, bishop b7. This move is also kind of tactical, although it's sort of hard to see why. I know that he's going to go g4, and that will actually weaken this knight, and the rook will be visible in front of it. And so... Total chaos broke out when I moved both of these pawns forward one square, creating attacking chances and opening up my light squared bishop. The game got very crazy, I had a better position, I ended up not winning it just because of how tactical it got, I sort of played with fire and I got burned, but this is one example of a tactical plan. Notice how my king is in the center? When the king is not castled, or is castled in the other side of the king that you're trying to attack, it makes attacking a lot easier, and so you see... A tactical plan creates threats right away, you have an attack on the king or the pieces, and so on. One more position I have for you, uh, let me just flip this one around, uh, is this position that I played with the black pieces uh, also several years ago, and we see another situation where I castled queenside, my opponent already went this way, and watch as I begin to create an attack, a tactical plan on the side where I would like to attack. My opponent attacks my bishop, and I strike back immediately. Equal or exceeding danger. I'm able to avoid the attack on my bishop by threatening the queen, and I'm happy if he takes me because it just opens up this side of the board. A few more moves went by, and one instructive moment I have here for you. Let's continue this plan, by the way. Bringing the rook, knight f3, attacking the knight, pushing pawns. Very instructive moment right here. Notice how my opponent also goes for a tactical plan. Not a slow strategic plan, but a tactical plan. Well, if you want to attack on one side of the board, is it better to close the center or open it? Usually it's better to close the center. Why? Because if the center is closed, it's a lot harder for the opponent to transfer pieces from one side of the board to the other to either defend themselves or counter-attack you. So that's why I played this move c4, my opponent moved back, and I continued my attack. And my pawns take away very valuable squares from his pieces, and he's not able to move his knight anywhere. Ultimately, his pieces are stuck. Okay, that is a tactical plan. A plan that involves immediate change or transformation in the position, and hopefully will benefit you. A positional plan, strategic plan, is a little bit slower. So uh, I'm going to pop into this position and rotate it once again. I was playing with the black pieces here. Obviously, there's a lot of pieces on the board here. Nobody is going to uh, have a checkmating attack right away. So what do you know about a position where, uh, well, there's a bishop on g2 and all the pawns are on dark squares? If you know something, great. If you don't know anything, now you're going to learn something. Queen d7. What does this move do? Well, I'm teaming up with my bishop, and my next move is going to be something with bishop to h3. What I'd like to accomplish is to trade off my opponent's light squared bishop because that would weaken their king. That's not a tactical plan, it is more of a strategic one, something a little bit more slow. Something like a peace trade that benefits your position, or changes the position in some way, is a more strategic plan. Playing with your pawns, another strategic plan. Let's watch how this game develops. My opponent trades, and I don't take with the bishop. 
I took with the rook because my plan was to then transfer the rook to the side and create pressure on the king. Fusing st strategy and tactics. So we're kind of doing a little bit of both because we are attacking. Knight e4, and of course I do not take. That would be a strategic mistake because I am trying to trade off his bishop so that I can get my queen in. He played h4, and now we see something we saw in the game that we just looked at. Bringing a piece to the party. I don't need to rush with this move. I can bring a rook, which is not playing. Now this rook is activated. Knight d5, and rather than allowing this trade to occur, I move my bishop back. All part of a long-term strategic plan to bring pieces to the king side, get rid of the g2 bishop, and create an attack. Queen d2, and now we see the plan taking place. And in this position, I combined a tactical shot with strategy. I got rid of the knight, because the knight was defending this important square. You might say, well, Levy, you just moved this bishop out of the way. It's a big difference. That knight was on the king side. This knight is standing pretty in the center, but it's not threatening to move here, and it's certainly not defending the king. Now I play rook g6, using the queen's new positioning against the queen, and opening up a line on the g-file. My opponent moves the queen, and now, which of my pieces is not quite taking part in the attack on the king side? Correct, the knight. And when I get rid of this bishop, that is going to be a fantastic square to land on, because I will be doing a lot of damage. And in the next few moves, I did exactly that. I took, moved out of the way, and brought my queen. And after knight e3, queen f3 check, my opponent resigned because of a few things. Number one, if king g1, there is knight e2 check with devastating effect. And number two, if king h2, you are simply getting mated. Right, I'm just going to take. So this game was a little bit more positional. We went for a certain peace trade to then allow us to attack our opponent and do some damage using an attack. This next one is going to combine two approaches. So th I had this position with the white pieces, and you see that his last move puts two attacks on this pawn. So obviously I did something with this pawn, right? Not quite. I sacrificed it. So this is a bit more of a tactical plan than the one that we just saw because things are getting captured. So what happens is, after a few more moves, I sacrifice the pawn, okay? But let's back that up real quick. When I didn't recapture, I anticipated that he would take me and I would take back. And what would happen? I would open up my rook, which is good strategically. I would have an open C file, which is good, once again, strategically. And my bishop on this diagonal is very strong. And so when my opponent played the next few moves, I traded off the dark squared bishop, and that allowed me to put my knight in the center. It allowed me to put my knight in the center, and the light squared bishop was open. There was pressure on this pawn, which forced this trade to happen, and now everything that I wanted for the cost of one pawn is coming true. So it's a mix of a tactical idea and a positional idea. Last example, we use strategy to get an attack. Now we're using strategy for pressure on the position. Pressure on the pieces. Difficult for black to move. We're not attacking the king. And so what happened in the game was my opponent played a few moves. I brought once again another rook coming to the party, taking part in the, in, in the game. And this move removed the rook from the defense of a very important pawn. And here I made a pawn trade, e4. And that's a good move. Because, again, I'm combining tactics and strategy. It's a tactical move. It causes a reaction from my opponent. And then, if he chose to ignore me, which he did, tactics happen. Two pieces. Queen a3. And yes, that allows a fork. But I get two pieces for the rook. And I went on to win this game. Against a very highly rated player, actually. Now he's a grandmaster. So, tactics and strategy. Sometimes you can sacrifice a pawn if it means that you get compensation in the form of active pieces, which is a strategic idea. One last thing uh, that I would like to show you is the following game. Um, I was playing with the black pieces here against the Grandmaster, and we had a very strange opening. And so here, what he did in a very close position was route his pieces and use pawn play to get an advantage. First thing that he did, because he can't make any forward progress with the knight, is go knight e2 which brings the knight over to this side of the board. 
I played b5, thinking that I was going to take some space, and he immediately struck with a pawn c4 and started to focus on the queen side. I tried to play rook b8, setting up a tactic with captures, and this, he sidestepped my tactical trick, and after h5, which I played to have squares for my bishop and also avoid this move, a transformation occurred on the queen side, and my pawns in the center simply collapsed because of all the pressure that he put on them with these moves, and I went on to lose very convincingly. But a move like knight e2 in a closed position is so advanced to then use a pawn break and a reroute to pressure the center. That is a very advanced strategic idea, and that is why I wanted to end with it. Because in this, in this example, no one really got attacked. And in the last example, no one was getting attacked. It's all about positional pressure. All right, that was slightly longer than 10 minutes. But hopefully it gave you a lens into how to make a plan. I have linked something in the description below which might help you. It's a long written guide that I found on how you can think about plans in chess. Also, before you go, there is a Discord link. We have an amazing community here in Gotham Chess, over 2,200 people talking about games, playing each other, discussing publications, and, and so on and so forth. Two videos are going to appear to my left. If you like the video, well, you know what to do. I'll see you in the next one.